the UIM ADP Aquabike World Championship returned to inimitable Ibiza for the Grand Prix of Spain in a brand new venue, San Antonio de Portmani, as over 130 of the world's top Aquabike talent from 26 countries converged on this beautiful Balearic Isle for round one of the 2022 season, where they competed in the Ski Division GPs 1, 2 and 3, Ski Ladies GP1, Runabout GP1, 2 and 4, Ladies Runabout GP4 and Freestyle. In this program, we bring you all the Ski Division highlights from the Grand Prix weekend with local hero Nacho Armias riding a high after having been crowned world champion in Ski Division GP1 last year. Sant Antonio de Portmani is blessed with over 18 kilometers of incredible beaches and turquoise Mediterranean waters that make this an ideal location for water sports, holidaying, and just general fun. Sant Antonio de Portmani is cosmopolitan and multicultural with a vibrant and avant-garde art scene, a very active social life, and restaurants and cafes that offer exquisite seafood delicacies with incredible vistas under sunny skies. With its bright white houses, fortified churches, and the stunning Renaissance walls of Dalt Villa, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's not hard to see why San Antonio de Portmani is a popular year-round tourism destination. But San Antonio also has a fantastic nightlife that begins in the evening on the Sunset Strip, centered around legendary venues like Cafe Mambo, which hosted the Aquabike Freestyle Show and where some of the world's top DJs perform on a regular basis. It was the ideal venue for a UIM ABP Grand Prix as the Aquabike family was welcomed to San Antonio in style, with crowds gathering to meet the riders and to enjoy the show as Ibiza once again became the capital of Aquabike, eight years since hosting the UIM ABP event in Playa de Mbosa in 2014. The Grand Prix of Spain circuit was another classic UIM ABP challenge with tight technical stretches and challenging waters for riders of all categories. Yeah, the course is also perfect. So, um, yeah, I think it's a bit similar to Olbia. I think we're going to have loads of fun this, uh, this race. <laughs> uh, the course is a great course. It's rough, so it's a little bit challenging, but the buoys are great, the course is great, and it'll make for a good race. In the Ski Division GP1, it was a talent-packed field of more than 20 riders led by the defending world champion and local hero Nacho Armias of Spain. But with the notable absence of three-time world champion Kevin Ryder of Austria, who was out with a knee injury and hoping to heal by round two. With his biggest challenger sideline, Nacho Armias was keen to start his title defense in fine form with the local support behind him. Yeah, I just want to wish Kevin a good recovery, speed recovery, and hopefully we can have him back. And I'm super grateful to be here racing in Ibiza, in my home country, with my friends around, my family, so it's super nice. And I will have fun for sure, and we'll see how it goes. The free practice was so fast, so uh, I'm hoping for a fast pole position and uh, really good battles in the motors. Balancing out the absence of rider, another world champion, Quinton Bosch, returned to UIM ABP racing after three years. The Belgian sensation hoping to repeat his world championship win in 2017. Yeah, I feel good. You know, I had my injury. I had also a lot of work with my shop. But uh, yeah, we're back. We're back in the beautiful city of Ibiza. And the uh, skis are good. We did a lot of development on the skis and uh, the last you know, two months I've been training hard. So uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Joining a European-dominated field for the first time were two USA-based riders, Devin Farthing and the world-famous Dustin Motsouris, who is ready to take the fight to the Europeans. I'm super excited to be here. Obviously, it is my first UIM, but I've wanted to do some of these World Championship races for a long time. I feel like a bucket list race, you know, so for me, super exciting, a breath of fresh air for me, and uh, yeah, I'm excited and I'm ready to give it 110%. It was a star-studded list of riders competing in the Triple Moto GP1 showdown, including the likes of the Perret brothers, Morgan, and multiple world champion Mikael Perret, as well as Axel Courtois, Daniel Svey Anderson, and Anders Keller. Moto One, the first of three motos, with 25 points up for grabs for the winner as the field of 23 riders entered the circuit for the customary parade lap as they warmed their engines and saluted the crowds with their national flags fluttering in the breeze. In the qualifying time trials, it was Nacho Armias with the best time, earning pole position with the all-important inside lane advantage going into the hole shots, ahead of Quinton Bosch in P2 and Dustin Mozuris P3, followed by Axel Courtois, Oliver Koch Hansen P6, the Poiré brothers in P7 and 8, and Daniel Svey Anderson down in P10. The riders lined up for the rolling start, and there they go on the opening straightaway to the green hole shots. Great start from Clinton Bosch as the Belgian gets past Armias. Also a great start from Dustin Mazuris as Armias feels the pressure right from the get-go. Armias is bumped down to third behind Mazuris and Bosch, who are neck and neck in their fight for the early lead in Moto1. Frenchman Valentin Dardillat putting the pressure on his compatriot Axel Courtois and Dardillat gets past the veteran rider to move up into fourth place. Tough start for defending world champion Nacho Armias as he falls back and is caught up by former world champion Mikel Pere on the number 77 ski. But it's Quentin Bosch who is first past the hole shots and into the circuit, leading the race as they enter lap one. The duel between Courtois and Dardia continues as Courtois catches and passes Dardia to reclaim fourth position just before they enter the parallel split course. Bosch is first into the split, racing hard and tight, knowing these early laps are crucial. But Bosch has his work cut out for him as Motsuris slaloms fast and aggressively in the green track, taking the fight to the Belgian in the blue. It's close, but Bosch manages to keep his head down and focus on the task, holding off the Arizona-based South African rider Dustin Motsuris. Bosch is given chase by Motsuris in second position, Armias is third, Courtois fourth, and Valentin Dardia fifth. In sixth position is Danish rider Oliver Koch Hansen, with Mikael Pore in seventh as the field of 23 riders enters the second lap in this 15 minute plus one lap race. Further back in the field is a battle between Czech rider Lukas Binar and Danish rider Anders Keller. Binar getting the better of the Dane, who tumbles in the rough waters, and that drops him down four spots before he can get back up and running. But Keller is forced to retire. A brother-on-brother -brother showdown as Mikael Pore overhauls his younger brother Morgan to move up into seventh position. Hungary this weekend. You're Meanwhile, another Belgian rider, Anthony Bernot, passes Daniel Svey Anderson to move up into ninth. Another rider out of the race, it's Andrea Guidi of Italy, whose Moto One run comes to a premature end. Bosch looks sublime out in the lead and totally at home in the choppy conditions as he opens a gap and eases through the parallel split course in the final lap. It's a sensational return to UIM ABP Racing by Quinton Bosch, who throws down the gauntlet and wins Moto One in style, passing Armias at the start and never looking back. Great win by the Belgian. Second only to Bosch, Dustin Motsouris is runner-up in his first ever UIM ABP Grand Prix. Great result for the South African, who demonstrates that he'll be a force to be reckoned with in 2022. Armias makes a late surge to try and pass Mozuris, but the Spaniard will have to settle for third in Moto1, with two more motos to go. 
Moto 1 results, Bosch, Mazzuri Sarmias, then in 4th it's Axel Courtois, Dardia 5th, Hansen 6th, the Pere brothers, Morgan and Mikel 7 and 8, with Berno and Anderson filling out the top 10. In Moto2, Quinton Bosch had the inside lane advantage as the field of riders completed the parade lap and lined up for the rolling start of San Antonio to Port Mani. The flag is up, the race begins, and it's a great start from Armias on the opening straight, but Quinton Bosch is also up and at it quickly, with Mozuris right in there amongst them as the three locked horns on the opening straight away to the green hole shots. Good start from Mikel Pere, the two-time world champion, overhauling his compatriot Axel Courtois in the opening lap. Bosch holds his pole position advantage, holding off Armias and Mozuris to lead the field around the hole shots and into the circuit. Great start from Armias as he gets past Mozuris to move up into second, taking the fight to Quinton Bosch as he gives chase to the Belgian. Mozuris is in third and Axel Courtois in fourth after having reclaimed his position from Mikel Pore. Bosch leads the pack into the split course, opting for the green track, while Armias takes the blue to see if he can't slalom his way into the lead on this first lap. I just have to call it, that's right. Back in the split course, Dustin Mozuris is putting it all out there to try and get past Nacho Armias, but Armias holds point in second. Bosch continues to dominate on track to back up his Moto1 win with another 25 points in Moto2 so far, but he'll be feeling the heat right behind him from Armias, Mozuris, Courtois, 4th, Dardilla, 5th, and Morgan and Mikel Pere, 6th and 7th respectively. Number 8 rider Valentin Dardilla having a great run, the Frenchman looking to back up his 5th place with another excellent result in Moto2 as he holds point in fifth and sets his sights on fourth. Armias making a last gasp effort to close the gap with Bosch and see if he can't put some pressure to force a mistake on the Belgian rider, but the back markers are making it tough going for the Spaniard as he struggles to find some clear water through the field. The Moto2 winner is Quinton Bosch who caps yet another excellent racing display with the maximum amount of points, giving him 50 overall and making him a favorite for the Grand Prix of Spain. Nacho Armias won better than last Moto, finishing runner-up to Bosch while Dustin Mozuris closes Moto2 out in third. French riders Courtois and Dardia finish fourth and fifth, followed by Morgan Pere, Mikel Pere, Oliver Koch Hansen, Anthony Bernot, and Daniel Sve Anderson completing the top ten. Yeah, it was a very hard moto. Honestly, Nacho was very fast, and uh, yeah, I tried to get a comfortable lead, but uh, I couldn't have one, so I had to really be 100% focused all race. And uh, yeah, luckily I got the win, so yeah, can be happy. In the Ski Ladies GP1, it was an all-European affair with 11 riders from 8 countries competing in the Triple Moto event. Fresh off her maiden world title in 2021 was Swedish ace Jana Borgström, who knew she'd have to be in top form to ward off a star-studded field of former champions. I feel good, I look forward to, to start this season. Uh, actually, I haven't done much preparations this year because I've been injured and I've been working a lot, but I still have a good feeling, so yeah, we will see how it goes. One of the favorites for the title in Ibiza would no doubt be Yasmini Praus of Estonia, who has finished on the year-end podium the last two seasons running and is hungry for a first-ever world title in 2022. I feel very good, I feel we're prepared. Um, I had a race last weekend, it went very well. I think the ski is good and the track was amazing today in training. Another title hopeful is three-time world champion Emma Nelly Ortendahl, who finished runner-up behind her Swedish compatriot Jona Borgström last year by just seven points, and she's keen to add a fourth gold medal to her collection. For this season, I've been uh, going back to the basics. Uh, I've been uh, switching my ski from the Commander to the Kawasaki, so I feel uh, more stable. So I'm excited to see where I'm at in the racing, but uh, I love the waves here and uh, yeah. I'm ready to race. The 2018 world champion Krista Uzare of Latvia overcame a serious injury a few years back and was in full form for the GP of Spain. 
There was yet another former world champion in the mix, back after a year's absence, 2020 world champion Jessica Chavon of France. With the likes of Lisa Kozan Bataglia, Janina Johansson, Johanna Grassa, Virginie Morlaesch, Benedict Dragne, and rookie Swiss rider Anais Mischler all in the mix, it promised to be one of the most competitive fields ever in the Ski Ladies GP1, but with the notable absence of Estelle Perret, who was out with a broken foot. The Ski Ladies GP1 Moto1 got underway with the parade lap where the Ski Ladies greeted the spectators and warmed up their engines. Yasmini Prowse would start on the inside lane in pole position after a blistering performance in the qualifying, with Jessica Chevan starting in P2, Jonna Borgstrom P3, Christo Uzare P4, Kozan Bataglia P5, Eminelli Ortendal starting all the way back after missing qualifying. There's the rolling start, the field enters the starting straightaway in a drag race to the green hole shots. Into the hole shots, it's Yasmini Prowse leading the field of 11 riders, a great start to Moto1 for the Estonian. Behind E. Prowse, it's Jona Borgström in second, Jessica Chavan in third on the opening lap. E. Prowse leads the field into the parallel split course, E. Prowse in the blue track, and behind her is a slalom showdown between Jona Borgström in the blue and Jessica Chavan in the green track. Borgström gets the better of Chavan and moves into second position ahead of the French rider. As the waves get bigger and as Chavan presses on, Borgstrom comes to a stop. She struggles to get back up, and she does it. Borgstrom back in the race, but she's dropped to third, losing second position to Jessica Chavan. Meanwhile, out ahead, Yasmini Prowse is racing hard, determined not to give up the lead. But Jessica Chavan is not backing down, taking the fight to E. Prowse and keeping up the pressure on the Estonian rider, but E. Prowse has a handy little lead. The final lap, E. Prowse comes out of the split course with lead intact, but Jessica Chavan is close behind. E. Prowse does it, she holds off Chavan and takes the Moto1 win and 25 points. Chavan a close second with former world champion Christo Uzare of Latvia third. Ortendal fourth, Dranje fifth, Virginie Morlaes sixth, Jona Borgström barely managing seventh. Tough start to her world title defense. Ladies GP1 Moto2, Yi Prowse would start on the inside lane again after a Moto1 win and no doubt resume the rivalry with Chavan beside her. There's the rolling start to Moto2, Yi Prowse quick out of the gate, but with Chavan also racing hard to keep up with the Estonian ace as the riders thunder to the green hole shots. Yi Prowse leads the pack into the circuit, and she is first into the split course, taking the green track with Jessica Chavan in the blue and Emanelli Ortendal in third, both in close pursuit of Yi Prowse in the lead as they come out of the parallel course. Behind the leading three riders is Latvian Christo Zare in fourth, trying to push for the top three in the early stages of this 15 minute plus one lap race. E. Prowse has been on the year-end podium the last two seasons running, and if it weren't for an uncompleted single race last year, the Estonian would have been world champion. She races an impeccable moto, holding off the world champions behind her lap after lap as she goes for another 25 points in her quest for the Grand Prix win. And E. Prowse runs the perfect race, leading from start to finish as she makes it two on a roll for the perfect start to the 2022 season, moving up to 50 points and the clear favorite for the Grand Prix of Spain title. Jessica Chavan finishes runner-up yet again to E. Prowse, Ortendal third and Krista Uzare fourth, then Borgström, Morlaesch, followed by Joanna Grassa, Janina Johansson, Anais Mischler and Lisa Kozan Bataglia. E. Prowse gets another 25 points to move up to 50, Chavan just 6 points behind her on 44, and then Ortendal and Uzare tied on 38 points each with one moto to go. I mean, two moto wins today, can't be happier. Really want to thank my team, my friends and all the sponsors who have made the ski, my travel hair and everything. There was also GP2 and GP3 action at San Antonio with a packed field of 12 riders in GP2 and 13 in GP3 competing over three motos. Don't count your luck. Oh, oh. 
In the Ski Division GP2, Portuguese rider Gonzalo Oliveira Rodriguez took the Moto1 win in style, but Estonian ace Matias Reynas struck back with wins in Motos 2 and 3 for the overall title. Rodriguez runner-up and Italian Andrea Guidi third. In the ski GP3, it was incredibly the same scenario as GP2, with Rodriguez winning Moto1 before Reynas took the next two motos and the overall win. Chongo Yashai of Hungary finishing third. The third and final moto of the Ski Ladies GP1 was raced the next day, and it would decide the Grand Prix of Spain. Following the Moto3 parade lap, the riders lined up for the rolling start. The flag was up, the race was on. Excellent start from Yasmini Prouse as the riders hit top speeds on the starting straightaway. Beside her, Jessica Chavan keeping pace with a pole rider. Bad start for Emanelli Ortendahl as she fell back. And further down the field, it was Virginie Morlaish pulling out ahead with some good pace. The field comes through the hole shots led by E. Prouse and Chavan who were neck and neck. Norwegian Benedikt Dranje is also going strong and hard into the circuit. He browses is first into the parallel course, opting for the green track, with Jessica Chavan also going into the green, choosing not to challenge Ypraus yet. But Jona Borgström is racing hard in the blue track, trying to move up into second or even first. She comes out ahead of Jessica Chavan. Great racing for Borgström as they round that wide turn, and they collide. Chavan is in the water. Here it is again. As Chevan gets past, the lead riders change. E. Prouse in command, but now Borgstrom in second, Ortendahl third, Christo Uzari fourth, Virginie Morlaish fifth. Jessica Chevan still trying to get back up and racing, waiting for a gap, and she's back at it, but with a lot of water to cover now that she's out of the top five. Eminelli Ortendahl in third, trying to push to catch Chevan, but she fumbles on the waves and finds herself in the water. Krista Uzari zips past Ortendahl to move into third, and as Ortendahl gets up and back into the race, Virginie Morlaish comes up on the outside as the two round the corner together, and Morlaish has it. But Ortendahl has trouble with her ski, just not able to get back up to speed as Benedict Dragna also overhauls Ortendahl, followed by Monaco rider Lisa Cosambataglia, the three-time world champion dropping further as her podium hopes in Ibiza quickly fade. The white flag is up, final lap. Chavan in sixth now sets her sights on Benedict Dragna, the French rider making a last gasp effort for a top five result in Moto3. She's going full throttle to catch the Norwegian, racing hard, and there she has it. Chavan overhauls Dragna to move up into fifth. Out in the lead, it's yet another Yasmini Prouse win. She is uncatchable, and she completes a perfect triple moto romp to win the Grand Prix of Spain in convincing style. Yprouse opens her 2022 UIM ABP campaign with a perfect 75 points and a Grand Prix win in round one in San Antonio de Portmani. Great stuff from the Estonian. Runner-up in Moto3 is Jona Borgström, Krista Uzari third, Virginie Morlaish with her best result of the weekend in fourth. Chavan fifth, Dragne sixth, then Kozan Bataglia, Johansson, Mischler and Grasa. I'm happy to win here in Spain, all three Moto wins. Good gap between first and second position. It seems that we have a good pace for the upcoming season and I'm just thrilled. <laughs> In the overall standings, Y Prowse is the Grand Prix of Spain champion and world standings leader. That last lap fifth place earns Chavan the second step on the podium as runner-up, with Christo Uzari third ahead of Borgstrom. The third and final moto of the Ski Division GP1, where the Grand Prix of Spain would be decided with a maximum 25 more points up for grabs. After two brilliant wins in motos one and two, Quinton Bosch was the one to beat, eight points ahead of Motsuris and Armias, who was in fighting mood before the race. 
as riders went out for the parade lap, greeting spectators and warming up engines for the race, the choppy conditions looked like they would be a determining factor to the outcome. Riders lined up for the rolling start, and there they go. Anders Keller falls back at the start, while Nacho Arnaz has a good launch, keeping right up there with race leader Quinton Bosch in the first lane. Once again, Bosch was first to the hole shots, leading the field into the circuit on the opening lap, but Armias was right up there with him, and then Axel Courtois, but with Valentin Dardia flying up behind Courtois in a bid to nap third. Bosch leads the field into the split course, opting for the green track, and Armias also goes for the green, not rushing to try and get an early jump on Bosch. As Bosch leads with Armias close behind, and then Courtois also moving close, it's Dustin Mozuris who charges out of the split and slots himself into third as they all come out of the split course. Courtois falls back to fourth, but Dardia is challenging him for the position, the two going neck and neck. But Dardia is the winner. He slips past Courtois to move into fourth position. Courtois bumped down to fifth. The top five, Bosch in the lead, Armias giving chase to the Belgian, then Motsuris charging into third, with Dardia pushing for the top three, and Axel Courtois in fifth. In fact, he, uh... Quinton Bosch appears to be slowing down. He looks like he's in trouble. Armias quickly grabbing the lead as he zips past the unfortunate Belgian. As the field passes him by, Bosch watches his hopes die as his ski breaks down in the middle of the parallel course. Bad luck for the Belgian, but that's motorsports. The Moto and the Grand Prix was now wide open. Armias with the lead, but he would have to hold off Mutsuris to take the title. The two riders even on 42 points going into Moto3. Behind Armias and Mozuris was Dardia in third, vying for a possible podium. After two fifth place finishes, 32 points from the first two motos, with Courtois also on track for a podium after Bosch's exit, having 36 points going into Moto3. This is Matsuris' last chance to try and pass Armias for the overall Grand Prix win, as a South African rider gives it all he's got in the rough conditions. The parallel split course, can Matsuris do it? Armias has a lead and is riding flawlessly, his sights set on the goal. And time runs out for Mozuris. Nacho Armias takes the Moto3 win and is the Grand Prix of Spain champion for 2022. Dustin Mozuris is both Moto3 and overall runner-up, with Dardia finishing third in Moto3 ahead of Axel Courtois fourth, then Hansen, Morgan Perret, Birno, Anderson, Keller, and Piscaglia rounding out the top 10. To be gone. Uh, I was struggling yesterday, especially in Moto1. I was struggling hard. Moto2 was better, and the pace I had in Moto3, I think, was, was much better during all the weekend. So I'm quite happy about that. Also, for sure, there is room to improve, but yeah, it's the first, it's the first race, and it's still a lot of work to do, so let's go. Armias is the GP of Spain champion with Motsuris runner-up. Great start to his maiden UIM ADP campaign. And third place goes to Axel Courtois, who beat Dardia and Bosch to the podium. That concluded the opening round of the 2022 UIM ABP Aquabike World Championship from beautiful San Antonio to Port Monty. See you in round two.